Have you ever heard of Graves' disease and wondered what it really means? Today, we're diving into a crucial topic that affects millions worldwide but often doesn't get the attention it deserves. Graves' disease is the most common cause of hyperthyroidism globally, impacting 20 to 30 people out of every 100,000 each year. It affects approximately 3% of women and 0.5% of men worldwide. Despite these significant numbers, many people are still unfamiliar with this condition. In this video, we'll break down everything you need to know, what Graves' disease is, its symptoms, causes, and, most importantly, how it can be treated. By the end, you'll have a clear understanding to better navigate or support someone dealing with this condition. Before we get started, please remember that this video is for informational purposes only. It's not a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always consult your healthcare provider for any questions or concerns you may have about your health or a medical condition. All right. With that said, let's get started. First things first, what exactly is Graves' disease? Graves' disease is an autoimmune disorder that leads to the overactivity of the thyroid gland, a condition known as hyperthyroidism. The thyroid gland, located in the front of your neck, plays a major role in regulating your metabolism, energy levels, and overall body functions by producing thyroid hormones. But in Graves' disease, the immune system mistakenly attacks the thyroid gland, causing it to produce an excessive amount of these hormones. This overproduction of thyroid hormones speeds up your body's metabolism, leading to a host of symptoms that can really impact your day-to-day -day life. Graves' disease usually occurs in people between the ages of 30 and 50, but it can also affect children and older adults. So, what are the telltale signs of Graves' disease? There's a wide range of symptoms, and they can vary from person to person. Common symptoms include Rapid or irregular heartbeat Many people with Graves' disease experience a fast or irregular heartbeat, known as tachycardia. Weight loss despite normal eating. Even if you're eating your usual amount, you might start to lose weight because your metabolism is in overdrive. Increased sweating and heat intolerance. You may find yourself sweating more than usual or feeling uncomfortable in warm temperatures. An enlarged thyroid gland or goiter. It occurs due to the thyroid's overproduction of hormones, causing noticeable neck swelling. Nervousness or irritability. This is because the excess thyroid hormones can affect your nervous system, leading to anxiety and restlessness. Tremors. Some people notice their hands shaking or feel unsteady. Fatigue and muscle weakness. Ironically, even though your body is running at a high speed, you might feel incredibly tired and weak. Changes in menstrual cycle. Women might notice their periods becoming irregular or less frequent. One of the most distinctive symptoms is something called Graves' ophthalmopathy, which affects about 30% of those with Graves' disease. Graves' ophthalmopathy causes your eyes to bulge out due to inflammation and swelling behind the eye. It can also lead to redness, dryness, and in severe cases, vision problems. This occurs because the same autoimmune process that affects the thyroid can also target the muscles and tissues around the eyes. Interestingly, Studies have shown that smoking can significantly increase the risk of developing Graves' ophthalmopathy. One study published in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism found that smokers were twice as likely to develop this eye condition compared to non-smokers. Now, let's dig into what causes Graves' disease and who's most at risk. While the exact cause isn't fully understood, we do know that it's related to a malfunction in the immune system. The body produces antibodies, called thyroid-stimulating immunoglobulins, that mistakenly attack the thyroid gland. There are a few risk factors that can increase your likelihood of developing Graves' disease. Genetics. If someone in your family has Graves' disease or another autoimmune condition, your risk is higher. Gender. Women are significantly more likely to develop Graves' disease than men. Age. As I mentioned earlier, it typically affects people 30 and 50, but it can also affect children and older adults. Stress and infection. Major life stressors or infections can sometimes trigger the onset of the disease in those who are genetically predisposed. Smoking. Smoking can also increase the risk, particularly for developing Graves' ophthalmopathy. Research supports these risk factors. A study published in the European Journal of Endocrinology highlighted that family history and smoking are among the strongest predictors of developing Graves' disease. This study also noted that stressful life events could act as triggers for the onset of the condition, especially in those who are genetically predisposed. So, what happens if you or someone you know starts showing these symptoms? How is Graves' disease diagnosed? Typically, your doctor will start with a physical exam and take a detailed medical history. Blood tests are crucial in diagnosing Graves' disease. They measure the levels of thyroid hormones, T3 and T4, 
and thyroid-stimulating hormone, TSH. In Graves' disease, TSH levels are usually low, while T3 and T4 are high. Your doctor might also order a radioactive iodine uptake test, which can help confirm the diagnosis by showing how much iodine your thyroid is absorbing. Now, on to treatment options. The good news is, there are several ways to manage Graves' disease, and many people lead healthy, normal lives with the right treatment. 1. Antithyroid medications. These medications work by preventing the thyroid from producing too much hormone. They're often the first line of treatment, especially for younger patients or those with milder symptoms. A study in the New England Journal of Medicine found that antithyroid drugs can effectively manage symptoms and restore normal thyroid function in many patients. 2. Radioactive iodine therapy. This is one of the most commonly used treatments. It involves taking a dose of radioactive iodine, which is absorbed by the thyroid gland. Over time, it destroys the overactive thyroid cells, reducing hormone levels. It's a highly effective treatment, but it often leads to hypothyroidism, so you'll need to take thyroid hormone replacement for life. According to a study published in Thyroid, about 80% of patients treated with radioactive iodine develop hypothyroidism within a year. Hypothyroidism is generally easier to treat than hyperthyroidism and tends to cause fewer long-term health issues, however, managing hyperthyroidism often requires more complex treatment strategies. 3. Surgery, thyroidectomy. In some cases, especially if other treatments haven't worked, surgery to remove part or all of the thyroid gland might be recommended. This also typically results in hypothyroidism, requiring lifelong hormone replacement therapy. 4. Symptom management. In addition to these treatments, beta blockers might be prescribed to manage symptoms like rapid heartbeat and tremors. For those with Graves ophthalmopathy, treatments might include corticosteroids, eye drops, or in severe cases, surgery. One interesting study published in the Lancet Diabetes and Endocrinology suggested that a combination of antithyroid drugs and radioiodine therapy might be more effective in some patients than either treatment alone, reducing the likelihood of relapse. While traditional treatments for Graves' disease are essential, many people also explore natural remedies and lifestyle changes to support their health. Remember, these approaches should complement, not replace, conventional treatments, and it's important to discuss them with your healthcare provider. Here are some natural strategies that might help. 1. Dietary Adjustments Focus on a balanced diet rich in antioxidants, like fruits and vegetables, which can help reduce inflammation. Some people benefit from avoiding gluten, dairy, and soy, and incorporating selenium-rich foods, like Brazil nuts and fish, which support thyroid health. 2. Herbal Supplements Herbs like bugleweed and lemon balm may help reduce thyroid hormone production. Ashwagandha can balance hormones and reduce stress. Always consult your healthcare provider before using supplements, as they can interact with medications. 3. Stress Management Reducing stress through activities like yoga, meditation, or nature walks can help manage symptoms. Mindfulness-based stress reduction programs have been shown to improve quality of life for people with chronic conditions, including thyroid disorders. 4. Adequate Sleep Aim for 7-9 to nine hours of quality sleep per night to support immune function and hormone balance. Poor sleep can worsen thyroid disorder symptoms. 5. Regular exercise. Moderate exercise helps manage stress and maintain a healthy weight but avoid overexertion if symptoms are not well controlled. Research shows that regular exercise benefits thyroid health, though excessive activity might worsen hyperthyroidism symptoms. While these natural approaches can provide support, it's essential to work with your healthcare provider to find the best overall treatment plan for you. If Graves' disease is not properly treated, it can lead to serious complications such as heart problems, increased risk of arrhythmias, stroke, and heart failure. Osteoporosis. Weakening of bones, making fractures more likely. Thyroid storm. A rare, life-threatening condition with high fever and rapid heart rate, often triggered by sudden changes in medication or stress. Thyroid eye disease. Severe eye swelling that can damage the optic nerve and cause vision loss. To wrap up, today we've covered what Graves' disease is, its symptoms, causes, and the different treatment approaches available, including some natural remedies and lifestyle changes. Remember, managing Graves' disease is a journey, but with the right information and support, it's definitely possible to lead a healthy and fulfilling life. If you found this information helpful, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, comment with your thoughts or experiences, and don't forget to check out our other videos on health and wellness. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.